Unlike YouTube short videos that I only just found out are limited to 60 seconds, there is no limit to YouTube long videos. My editor thought I should create a timeline in the description for those of you who want to jump around this slightly over 17 hour video. But that's not what autofillery is all about, so no timeline for you. For those of you who remember my video about the Cali MM6, that link is in the description, you will note that while I liked the sound, it had three major issues. One, it was simply too big for most desktop systems, unless you had a desk like Potter from It's a Wonderful Life. Then it was just perfect, but having such a desk makes you a warped, frustrated old man. Second, because they were powered speakers, they don't quite work in a living room, where you need to run power cords to each one making it much harder to put them in the exact location you want without running over the power cord, be it with a vacuum cleaner, or just tripping over it. It's much easier to circumvent obstacles with speaker wire, where it can be run around and under things much easier. Check out the flat, flat wire speaker cable if you ever want to run cable under a rug. The third issue was I wasn't in love with the remote. It just didn't make any sense because the functionality only work with digital inputs, not analog. Kind of annoying that you can't control the volume on an analog source, but you can with a digital. Overall, I felt the MX MM6s were very good speakers that didn't really have a place on your desktop or your stereo hi-fi or your home theater. Also in other videos, I've often argued that not having a Bluetooth connection is a major mistake. How cool would it be, I said, to have a pair of quality powered speakers where the only thing you need to have a complete system is your phone to stream your music. Yes, I know a lot of companies have Bluetooth built into power speakers. Now the marketing guys at Cali could instantly tell that the scientific audiophiles ideas were pure gold and started working on a new set of speakers. Cali does deny even knowing our video marketing ideas exist, which is hard to believe since it has just under 10 million views. So here it is, the LP-UNF, a powered pair of speakers, well, this is just one, the primary, that have a Bluetooth input, volume control right on the front, and are the right size to fit squarely on most desks. And no remote, which is a huge positive, as desktop speakers just don't need one. I let Hemholtz listen to the 250 hours of pink noise while I prepared to enter audio bliss with the queen of the king of instruments, the stunning Diane Bish. On the back, you may notice there are eight dip switches. I'm going to start with number eight because that is used to turn the blue power light on or off. A wonderful option for real audiophiles like myself who were sick and tired of seeing blue lights. So now you notice the lights turn off after I use them. New marketing idea for Cali. Do a calibration speaker with me and we'll change that light to burnt orange. Plus I have some other ideas that I'll detail in the rest of the video. So all the other dip switches deal with the sound. There are nice pictures on the rear to show you options for setting them based on your placement. I recommend measuring them and then playing with the switches, but if you don't want to, they are effective, if not perfect. Now this is the primary speaker. The other is a secondary speaker controlled by the primary. The only thing you need for the secondary speaker is this cable. Longer cables are available from Cali, but you should only need this, this particular one to separate the speakers. Because if you need to go separate them further, you're making a bit of a mistake as they are actually designed to be at approximately four feet apart from each other. The secondary speaker isn't powered, has no dip switches, no lights on the front, nothing. Thus, you're only buying these speakers in pairs. You'll notice on the rear, there are no outputs on this speaker, except the cable to connect to the secondary speaker. So if you're using a subwoofer in your desktop setup, you're going to need either a DAC with a subwoofer output or a subwoofer with outputs, like the soon to be released Cali WS 6.2. 
Analog inputs include TRS balanced and RCA. Digital inputs include Bluetooth and USB-C. Connecting to Bluetooth was a snap. Just hold down the plus button, minus button at the same time for about three seconds to start the pairing mode. This really is the best way for Bluetooth to be connected because always on connections can wreak havoc. I had a pair of Audio Engine HD6s years ago and the number of times my mom would inadvertently connect to it and blasting Led Zeppelin while I was blissfully listening to Diane Bish was annoying at first. By the 20th time she did it, I figured out she was just messing with me. Needless to say, those speakers went right in the trash and I asked my dad for another check to buy a non-Bluetooth pair of desktop speakers. Now, once I connected my phone to the Bluetooth, it was the only input it would use until you forget the Bluetooth connection on your phone or the Bluetooth connection is lost, like if you walk out of range or you restart your phone. When you get back in range, even if you're listening to something over analog, once you get back in range, that Bluetooth connection will take hold and you will not hear that analog connection anymore. This brings me to the title of my short video, Best Sub $300 Audiophile System. At $299, you can pick up the Cali LPUNF speakers, stream your music via Bluetooth, and be done. Not only is nothing else needed, this is the only sub $300 powered speakers with Bluetooth that I would consider desktop audiophile quality. We'll get more into the quality when we check out the measurements. Plugging in a digital source to a USB is as simple as attaching the cable no different than connecting the analog sources. It should be obvious that the plus and minus buttons control the volume. What isn't obvious is that even though there are 11 LEDs on the front, there are actually 34 steps. Each time you press the button, you actually move through a setting. Each of the LEDs has three brightness settings and each press of the volume button goes through each volume keep pressing and the lights keep getting brighter until you move to the next LED. Notice I have the LEDs off, but pressing the volume button, they light back up. After four or five seconds of not doing anything, the lights go back off. Very good interface design. Another cool feature is the primary speaker can be changed to output the left or the right channel. So you can put this primary speaker on either side of your desk. Simply turn the speaker on, wait until the LEDs are all lit up, and then just press and hold the minus sign until one side starts flashing. And that indicates which channel your primary speaker is set to output. If that isn't the channel you want, the primary speaker, just turn the speaker off, back on, and repeat the steps. The flashes will switch sides, you turn the speaker off, and that sets it the next time it comes back on. Lastly, you can also use the USB-C input to update the firmware. Considering how many people will buy these from Amazon, I was a little perplexed that the only option is to contact the retailer where you bought the product. Amazon will shut you down after 30 days without returns. My hope is Amazon would contact Cali, but since I didn't buy these, Cali sent them to me for my review, I can't start a return process, so I can't tell you how that process works should there be a problem. Wait, I almost forgot. You could always send broken products to Joshua Valor. Contact him at his channel for information. Now even I, the golden-eared child, can be quickly tricked with a little treble push. When I first started listening to my Bish tracks after 200 hours of pink noise burning, I was thoroughly excited. Did Cali perfect the powered bookshelf speaker? Close, but no cigar. After about an hour, the treble push was a little much and I decided to dial it down. First, I used the jumper, switch number six. Putting it in the upward position, it lowers from 5,000 hertz down a bit. And by the time you hit 15,000 hertz, it drops about two decibels. It wasn't enough, but it did help. Which is why I said earlier, if you don't use EQ, the jumpers can get you close to perfect sound, but you're going to need EQ to perfect these callies. And perfect, you can get them. As long as perfect starts at 80 hertz and you keep the output below 90 dB and 0.8 meters about the distance most people would sit from these speakers at a desk. Bass has a nice thump, within reason. These aren't getting to 20 or 30 hertz. Cali specs these from 39 hertz to 25,000 kilohertz, plus or minus 10 dB, and 54 to 21,000 kilohertz, plus or minus 3.5 dB. When I first saw those specs, I thought Cali changed physics to get a four inch woofer to play so low. Those specs are a bit optimistic, but not terribly far off, as I'll show you soon. So it's time to stop listening and test the speaker. 
Let's take a look at my results measured at 0.8 meters from mic to speaker. Okay, out of the box, we measured the Cali, and as you'll see, we've got a little bit of a bump around 100 hertz. This is based on 75 decibels for our reference, and we got definitely a bump around 80, which I like. I think a lot of people like a uh, nice bass response up here. However, near field um, users and people who are doing production often like a completely flat response when they're doing near field speakers. So, these are near field. I do like the bump. I'm not going to mess with that. I like the hump at 80. Five decibels is a nice drop off. See, but it does drop a little bit at 300 hertz. And then after 7,000, we start to get a little bit of a peaking up around five, eight decibels. So, first thing was to drop the um, number six switch, jumper switch up. That dropped the high end about two decibels, just about here, but it's still a little bit high for me. I want to bring that down to be flat or even slightly below flat and we did that with this next one so what we did was jumper switch went up and oh yeah it looks good one six smoothing not one third and when we take a look at our equalizer settings we've got two you'll notice the um, peaking filter right here at 300 hertz I did that with a Q factor of 3.2 six decibel gain and then I brought in a high shelf filter at 10,000, dropped it by 8 decibels, and we get this, an extremely flat near field response. Again, all this was done at 0.8 meters away from the speaker, so this is definitely near field. Um, now, the beauty is distortion. Very well controlled, and very well controlled at 80. Once again, at 85. That distortion number is still staying well below the threshold of hearing. 90, okay, starting to get up, especially in the treble region, but still behaved. Right right here, now we're starting to break 75 decibels. So maybe you're going to be hearing a little bit of distortion at 95 decibels. And then at 100, we start getting really unhappy, especially in the bass region. Um, but if you play this with a subwoofer and can take out everything below 80 and not send it to the Callies, um, you'll still be pretty well controlled. So a very, very well designed speaker. I would say one of the best, if not the best, I've ever tested at this price range. We're not talking about getting little Genelix or Newmans at $2,000 um, and saying, oh, look, they're better behaved. Yeah, these are $300 speakers and I'm very impressed with what Cali is doing at this price point. So that's it for our measurements. Remember, the SPL and phase was done at one sixth. Um, a lot of people like to show off their speakers at one third smoothing. So at 75 decibels, one third smoothing, this is what the speaker looks like. It is flat and it can be EQ'd very well. How close this desktop speaker has come to perfection? No, it's not perfect, but what in the world is, besides yours truly? But it can't play deep bass, and that has to remove red meat from being part of the rating. But this certainly isn't a vegetarian dish. Not that most vegetarian dishes can't obliterate the hot dog and Corona rating we gave the Rose Technic stack amp. We need to keep a red wine in this rating, but without red meat, you've probably already guessed it. Yes, the infinite rating calls for a 2016 bottle of Freemark Abbey Merlot priced around $73 paired with a miso glazed salmon with an orzo and mushroom ragu. Now with such a rating, the Cali needs to be put up in a head-to-head -head matchup with the current speakers in my desktop sp system. That head-to-head -head matchup will be a duel to the death. The winning speaker will enter my desktop reference system. Now that video will be coming shortly, so please subscribe and make sure notifications are on so you will be one of the first to know when that video drops. Thanks for watching and have a great day.